What is the Upskies, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the GX Hockey Cast. We're on episode 109. JT Miller. Let's go with JT Miller. There's so many number nines, bro, of my little hockey show where once a week I go through all of the major news and what's happening in the NHL, mainly focusing in on the Toronto Maple Leafs and the Calgary Flames. Those are my two favorite teams. But I'll be talking about all 32 teams on this podcast. So what's on tap for today? Well, I got a lot of signings to go through. I forgot to go through them last week, so we'll be going through numerous signings that have gone on over, well, basically all of them after July 1st. Going to go through a bunch of those freaking things. Going to be talking about the Edmonton Oilers, see if their team is maybe going to be able to repeat and get themselves back to the finals. We'll talk about Leon Dreisaitl. We're going to be Little stop, little pit stop in Pittsburgh, and we'll talk about Arizona and San Jose, amongst others. But let's start off with the immense amount of signings that I missed from last week. I don't even know where the heck in heck we left off. I felt like I talked about Sebastian Ajo signing in Pittsburgh, but I don't feel like I talked about Victor Olofsson signing in Vegas yet. So I don't know, man. There's uh, there's a lot here. So. Let's touch on Victor Olofsson signing with Vegas for one year, $1,750,000 for the 28-year-old left winger. I think that that could be a bargain right there. Yes, Victor Olofsson hasn't been that, you know, 25-30 goal scorer that he was a few years ago for Buffalo. But uh, I feel like his role has been diminished a bit there, so maybe he can find a better role. You know, Vegas has lost a lot of people over the last season or two or three or whatever and yeah maybe Victor Olofsson's going to be a nice bargain contract that they can get there and maybe get 20 25 maybe he can hit 30 goals with the Vegas Golden Knights who knows but that's a that's a nice little contract right there so nothing wrong with that one I'm seeing Thomas Tatar re-signing with, or he's coming, I I felt like he was already with New Jersey once, he's been around, but Thomas Tatar, one year with New Jersey, $1.8 million for a 33-year-old left winger, that's um, some good depth, he's not the, again, another player that's not putting up the, I feel like he was putting up some good points back in a a few years ago, but uh, I feel now he's a bottom six, kind of a depth role guy for New Jersey, but if injuries happen, he should be able to be a solid option to move up in the lineup, move up and down. We got a big one here with St. Louis. Pavel Buchnevich gets a six-year extension. I do feel like I talked about this, but $8 million per season, $48 million total. I think that's a really solid contract. He's 29 now, but with the way that the NHL is, he should still be solid uh, production-wise till he's probably 34, and then maybe they he'll fall off a little bit, but by then, there's only going to be one or two years, so I think it's a pretty good contract for St. Louis. Thankfully, it wasn't if they went to eight years, then I'd be questioning it, but uh, six years, not too bad. We have a ton of uh, just smaller contracts here. Adam, Adam Gaudet to Ottawa. Colton Pullman to Buffalo. Dylan Gambrell to Columbus. Anthony Richard to Philadelphia. These are all depth signings. Uh, league minimum. Colin Blackwell's going to Dallas. We got Mackenzie Entwistle to Florida. We got uh, Pierre-Olivier Joseph is going to St. Louis. That's not bad. Uh, he's a 28-year-old defenseman. I did not. I thought he was a forward. Cam Atkinson is going to Tampa Bay for nine hundred grand, thirty five year old right winger. So again, Cam Atkinson dealing with a lot of injury problems over the last uh, long amount of time, I would say here. But Cam Atkinson, if he could uh, maybe stay healthy, and we'll see if he can get some points here. I mean, I I wouldn't be expecting a ton out of Cam Atkinson. Last season, 28 points, 13 goals in 70 games, a minus 22, which is rough. Didn't play any games at all in 22-23, and then 21-22 was the last time he had a 20-goal season with 23 goals in 73 games. So it would be, you know, it would be really great if Cam Atkinson can get to 20 goals. I wouldn't be banking on it, but it is Tampa Bay, and I don't know, magical things happen in Tampa. 
Tampa Bay. So maybe they can rejuvenate Cam Atkinson. Again, he's 35 years old, so more than likely not likely, but we'll see. Shane Pinto gets the two-year extension with Ottawa. I believe I touched on this one, $3.75 million for the next two years for the 23-year-old center. Bridge deal, don't really like um, where that is probably going to end up for Ottawa. They're gonna more than likely going to be paying a lot, or they're going to lose this player. We have, uh, let's see, Jarrett Anderson Dolan resigns with Winnipeg. Jansen Harkins, Anaheim. We got a bunch of Toronto Maple Leafs coming here. It's Philip Myers. It's Dakota Mermis and Cedric Paré for the Toronto Maple Leafs. St. Louis, Adam Juracek, Detroit, Tyler Mott. All mostly league minimum. Now we have Anton Lundell, the new uh, Stanley Cup champion, gets his extension with the Florida Panthers. Six years, $5 million per season for the 22-year-old center. Great contract right there. Great contract. This guy was a huge part of their run uh, to the Stanley Cup, of course. He's great defensively. Uh, right now, I think he's mostly a third-line center for them, but more than likely, at some point, we'll be moving up. He's been steadily getting a li- well. Not, not necessarily. His first season was his best at 44 points, and then it's been 33 points and 35 points, respectively. But 13 goals, 22 assists last season. I would expect that this player is going to increase in points over the course of this contract. And his defensive games, two-way games, just going to continue to get better. Nice contract right there. for. I know it's a little bit expensive, $5 million for a third-line center right now, but in a couple of years, imagine he could be that second-line center behind Barkov, maybe. We have uh, lots lots and lots more, um, what do you call mar- minor league deals, Washington, Hardy, Hammond, Actel, Carolina, Riley, Stillman, Jack Johnson's coming back uh, to Columbus, 37-year-old defenseman now convinced to come back for one more run. Um, you know, understandably, the, the history behind Jack Johnson uh, his parents, you know, kind of taking all of his money when he was younger, and he didn't earn the amount of money. Nec- he doesn't have the money, so him playing later into his career kind of makes sense in a sad way. But Columbus bringing him in for his veteran services, who knows what role he's going to play on this team. Is he a seventh defenseman? He's going to get into the everyday lineup. I'm not really sure about that one, but Jack Johnson. Riley Suter's going to Washington, Travis Barron, Utah, couple of Calgary Flames here, Justin Kirkland and Jonathan Asperot coming over or a resign. And Nate Schmid's going to Florida. Pretty interesting. You know, Nate Schmid was a damn fine defenseman like not that long ago. I guess he's dealing with some uh, definitely been dealing with some injury problems. And uh, yeah, his game has taken a little bit of a decline, but man, this guy was an unreal defenseman for Vegas. He had a Man, he had a cup of coffee there in Vancouver. Yeah, I feel like ever since he hit Vancouver, it's kind of been going a little bit downhill for Schmid, but that's a, that's a little contract there for 800 Gs. Like, not bad right there for Florida. I imagine he can probably fit in there. Uh, you got Bobby Brink, like that name a lot. He resigns with the Philadelphia Flyers. Two-year extension, $1.5 million for the 23-year-old forward. Don't really know what to expect out of, out of this young man moving forward. His stats won't come up, so we'll just have to... Uh, I guess we just will never know anything about Bobby Brink. His stats won't come up, so there you go. Bobby Brink, still a Philadelphia Flyer. You have Vladimir Tarasenko. He's heading to Detroit for a couple of years at $4.75 million for the 32-year-old right winger. What, two-time Stanley Cup champion now? Just cut, Just got another one with the uh, Florida Panthers, but uh, career-wise, you know, he hasn't really been the, the you know, huge threatening goal scorer that he was. Uh, it's been a while since, really, uh, he's been a goal-scoring threat. 22-23, got 18 goals. 23-24, 17 goals. Oh, plus the six, so uh, 23 goals last season. So, I mean... I feel like maybe it's a little bit expensive for the production that he's been giving out. Like, if you're a Detroit fan, be looking for a minimum of 20 goals, hoping for for a 25 goals. He hasn't scored over 30 goals since 21-22, and that was back with St. Louis, and he has been moving all over the freaking place since then. He went to New York, back to St. Louis, to Ottawa, to the Panthers, and now he is in Detroit. So, 
We'll see if that helps Detroit get over the hump, adding in Vladimir Tarasenko. Kiefer Bellows re-signs with Nashville. Josh Mahura with Seattle. Carolina brings in Jack Roslovic, one of the bigger names left over in the free agency market. One year, $2.8 million for the 27-year-old center. Not a bad contract right there. I mean, Carolina's definitely trying to recoup some of the depth that they lost, some of the roster players that they lost over the uh, this free agency period. But Jack Roslovic, you know, he hasn't really been doing a lot over the last couple of years. Last time he scored 20 goals was in 21-22 with Columbus. And then it's been 11 goals. He had nine goals last season over uh, playing with New York and Columbus in only... Uh, 59 games he only got into last year. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see if he can fit into the Carolina mold. They're they're pretty good at, you know, getting people back on track with their systems. A great coach. So we we we'll see if Jack, uh, excuse me, if Jack Roslovic, where he lines up in the roster. Once I get, oh my goodness, I'm dying over here. Once I get into the Carolina situation, we'll see how their roster is looking. But I know Carolina's more than likely going to be doing some more work. So, Jack Roslovic, we'll see how that goes. Winnipeg, they bring back Hayden Flurry, or they they sign Hayden Flurry and Mason Shaw. More than likely some depth signings here, defenseman and a center. We have uh, uh, San Jose getting to work. Andrew, here's a name, Port Porterolowski, well done. Ty Delandria gets a uh, re-signing. He's uh, two years, $1.3 million dollars. He was just brought in from Dallas for dirt cheap. So, yeah, good to see the 23-year-old center. He's going to have a spot here in San Jose. Maybe more ice time than he's ever had. This guy was, I think, an 11th overall draft pick, like, back in the day. So there was something here. Maybe San Jose can find it. He's 23, so, you know, there could be a little bit more to find here with Delandria, but I don't know how much more. We have uh, San Jose also re-signs. Carl Gunstrom, two years, $1.8 million for the 26-year-old forward. You know, miss him from Toronto, one of the ones that got away. Maybe he gets traded back to to Toronto at some point, but he is remaining with San Jose. All right, what do we got now? A whole bunch of names. I don't even know that name, so I'm just not going to worry about it. Seattle gets Eli Tolvanen, re-signs for two years, $3.475 million for the 25-year-old forward. I really like Eli Tolvanen, especially since he got here uh, in Seattle. He's been pretty damn good for them, I must say. Um, You know, didn't really... Didn't find that game in Nashville. He was a pretty highly touted prospect and, uh, yeah, just never really got it going. But since he showed up in Seattle, he in 48 games, he scored 16 goals. And then last season in 81 games, 16 goals. So pretty consistent right there for Seattle, 15 goals. I mean, it might be a little bit pricey, but he does maybe have a little bit more potential there. Not a lot, but maybe he can get 20 goals at some point with Seattle. That would be nice. Yeah, and Yannick re-signs with Ottawa. Calgary getting some work done. They got Zane Zane Perrick. That is uh, the first draft, their first round draft pick from this this draft. There's a bunch of entry deals here. Uh, Matt Vey, Greedin, and Entian Morin all getting their entry level contracts with the Calgary Flames. Uh, J- Jacob Megna is coming back to Florida. Uh, Henry Yoki Haru re-signing with Buffalo. One year, $3.1 million for Henry Yoki Haru. You know, don't hear a lot about Henry Yoki Haru. That's a fun name to say, so let's throw it out there one more time. Henry Yoki Haru. How has he been doing career-wise over the last couple years? Ah, you know, nothing special. 20 points in 74 games. He was a plus 14, though, for the Buffalo Sabres last year, so that's... Uh, that's pretty that's pretty eyebrow raising. So yeah, that that's pretty good. LA brings in Caleb Jones, league minimum. Uh don't know any of those names, so I guess we'll just skip those. Anaheim, uh, ooh, R- Pavel R- Regenda is coming back. Winnipeg's bringing back David Gustafson and Logan Stanley. Logan Stanley getting a 2-year extension, 1.25 million dollars not bad I like Logan Stanley top six defenseman for them uh maybe seventh defenseman we'll see where that one goes but yeah I like Logan Stanley isn't he that big bitch? how big's this guy how big are you Logan 
You big boy? Oh yeah, he big boy. He's six foot seven, two hundred and twenty eight fucking pounds. God damn, big boy. Macklin Celebrini signs with the San Jose Sharks. We'll touch more on the whole San Jose Sharks roster and how we're looking here a little bit later on in the show. We'll see if maybe maybe is Macklin Celebrini going to be on the San Jose Sharks this year. We'll take a look at that a little bit later. But Macklin Celebrini signs his entry level deal, the first overall pick. The was it second overall pick? Ar- Artem Levshunov. He signs his entry level deal with Chicago. Don't know if he's going to be getting into the lineup just yet. You know, that's all. We'll just have to kind of wait and see if he's getting in there or not. Uh, we got Josiah Slavin, the other Slavin, also signing with Carolina. Igor Zamula resigns with the Philadelphia Flyers. Two years, $1.7 million cap hit for the 24 year old defenseman. I have never heard of this player before. Let's have a little look right here. He's big as fuck. He's six foot five. That's, uh, you know. We're back in that era of big is good in the NHL. 21 points in 66 games for the Flyers last year, a plus three, uh, five goals, 16 assists. Not too shabby at all. All right, not bad, not bad. You got, uh, so that this was part of a trade. So Edmonton, they re-sign Raphael Lav- Lavoie, Lavoie, something like that. Anyway, this is a young, young player, younger. Wait a second, is it, or is this some other dude? Regardless, hold on now. Let's take a look. No, no, he's a different dude. Different dude. Okay, no, not a big deal. We'll move on. Uh, Zach Soshenko resigns with Columbus, Colorado. Call him Richie. Barrett Hayden gets uh, resigned with the. Oh, this is interesting. It says Arizona, but technically it's Utah. So Barrett Hayden resigns with Utah. Two years, two point six five million dollars for the twenty-four year old center. Now this dude. A couple of years ago was just lighting it up with Clayton Keller and I think it was Schmaltz, that lineup. Uh, and then last last year was a fucking disaster for Barrett Hayden. Uh, injury riddled, 33 games, all he got into, only the 10 points and minus 13. So he needs to bounce back in a big way. The season before that, he had 19 goals, 24 assists, 43 points, looking like he was about to break out. So he really needs to rebound. It's going to be a very important season for Barrett Hayton, and basically, in a way, kind of a bridge deal, because, like, you know, maybe if Barrett Hayton didn't have that injury-riddled season, he built on the season that he had prior, maybe we're talking about a six-year, five- to eight-year extension if Barrett Hayton just, you know, didn't get injured last season, so he's going to have to fight his way uh, back into the good graces to get himself a big contract next time around. Adam Boquist signs with the Florida Panthers for league minimum for the 23-year-old defenseman. I mean, not a bad waiver shot with this guy. He may not make their lineup, but, uh, yo, this guy at one point was a fairly, fairly highly touted defenseman prospect. I forget what round he was taken in. Does it say? Yeah, he was a first round eighth overall pick by the Chicago Blackhawks. So at one point, this guy was a fairly, fairly highly touted prospect. And it just really hasn't worked out. He didn't really get it going with Chicago. He moved to Columbus. Didn't really get it going in Columbus because, you know, Columbus was uh, kind of a disgrace over those uh, years that he was there. So maybe now he's coming into the Stanley Cup winning franchise, and which seems to be, you know, Florida in a really good spot right now organizationally. Maybe Adam Bodquist can find his game there. We'll see. Minnesota gets uh, Declan Chrisom and Adam Raska. They're coming back. Uh, Utah gets Igor Sokolov and Artem Duda. That's an entry-level deal for Duda. I like that name. All right, we got Ryan Suter. He finds a team in St. Louis to find a home with. The 39-year-old defenseman, one-year league minimum, but I believe this contract is a bonus uh, Layden, there's a bunch of bonuses that I think if he hits them all, we'll hit him at it like a $2.5 million. That will come on to the cap hit for St. Louis next season if he hits the bonuses. But, I mean, yeah, sure, why not bring him in? Um, Ryan Suter, for that price, you know, he didn't really have a good couple of runs there with with Dallas. Like, he was, yeah, it wasn't, wasn't that great for them. But we'll see if he's all right with St. Louis. He's 39, so tamper your expectations. Uh, Jake Christensen re-signs with Columbus. Sam Dickinson, the 
the first rounder, the other first rounder for San Jose signs. I believe that he's a defenseman. I don't, I'm not sure. He doesn't say. Uh, all right, J.J. Moser re-signs with the Tampa Bay Lightning. Two years, $3.375 million for the 24-year-old defenseman who was brought in in the Sergachev deal. So, this guy, you know, he's... Um, let's take a look at his career. This could be a really good deal for Tampa Bay. Um, so, this defenseman... Uh, what do we got here? 82 games, 31 points. 80 games last season, 26 points. Again... On Arizona, not the best team. Now he's coming to Tampa Bay. This could be a really good deal for Tampa Bay. He could emerge and become a great top four defenseman for them. Or he can just be a solid top six option. Regardless, the price seems pretty good to me. It could could be really good. Ty Emerson signs with San Jose. Tidge Aginla signs with Utah. Boo, be a flame. Be a flame, come on. Maybe he gets to play this season. I would... I. Very excited to see what Tijiginla is going to do in the NHL. That that yeah, I'm excited. Sammy Walker resigns with Minnesota. Uh, wow, what a name this guy has. Michael Br- Brand Brandzig Nygaard signs his entry level deal with Detroit. Uh, we got a couple of signings here for Boston. Uh, Michael Callahan and Alex Regula, a couple of young 23, 24 year old defensemen. I more than likely rather depth signings or they're going to be some AHL players. Chad Rue freaking Weedle. He is coming back. He's going to New York Rangers, baby. 34-year-old defenseman, more than likely some depth right there. Chet Greaves, goaltender, re-signs with the Columbus Blue Jackets for $800,000 for the next two years. He could, he could emerge as the next goaltender for the Columbus Blue Jackets. Again, goaltenders are extremely hard to read. Like, you have really no idea. His stats won't pull up, so I can't freaking look at how he did last year. I don't think he got into a lot of games with the whole Merz-Lickens situation. And the the goaltending is really just kind of a mess right now in Columbus. Maybe Jet Greaves pushes through, finds his spot, and becomes the goaltender for Columbus, but yeah, it's, uh, we'll see where that one goes, it's gonna be a very interesting situation, the goaltending in Columbus, we have Brandon, Braden, Braden, Braden Schneider, re-signs with the New York Rangers, I will always remember this player, because I desperately wanted the least to draft him that season, and they didn't, and look, look at, look at Schneider go, he's being a solid-ass defenseman for the New York Rangers, and he got into their lineup, like, immediately, so I was like, fuck, man, I wish the Leafs picked him, really could use that right-hand shot defenseman right now, two years, 2.2 million dollars for the 22-year-old defenseman, nothing wrong with that, a little bridge deal right there, okay, don't know any of those names, Mads, Mads Sogard, two-year extension with the Ottawa Senators, goaltender, Again, kind of similar to Jet Greaves. Ottawa's got a lot of shit going on with their goaltending right now. They just brought in Allmark. They got fucking... Uh, oh, Corpus Allo's gone. Oh, yeah. Okay, so this guy could be a solid backup option for the Ottawa Senators. I love your name, Mads. Like, bro, that's that's badass. That's some badass shit right there. Matthew, uh, uh, Robertson has signed. Robertson's going to New York. Not... The Toronto Maple Leaf Robertson, Matthew Robertson. God damn you, Steve Dangle. He scared the hell out of me. He sent out a tweet. He's like, oh, Robertson's going to New York. And I thought he meant fucking Nick Robertson. I was like, oh, shit. But it was Matthew Robertson. So not nice. Finney Hanola re-signs with the Winnipeg Jets. Two years, 800 grand for the 23-year-old defenseman. If they actually decide to use him, that would be great. A uh, bunch of names that we don't really know. Quinton Byfield is a name that I know. Here's a big one. Five-year extension, $6.25 million per year for the 21-year-old right wing slash center. I, I like this contract a lot for for uh, Los Angeles, man. That's a great deal. It would be even better if it was that eight-year, but I understand them not wanting to go there. But Quinton Byfield has only improved every single season. He went from 1 point to 10 points to 22 and now 55 points last year. I would say officially has broken out now. And I think he's only going to be adding on to those point totals. 20 goals, 35 assists last year in 80 games. Yeah, dude. And this guy's a good-ass player. Like, he's big. He can play center. But right now, they just don't need him to play center. And he's actually been playing better on the wing. So maybe this guy's a bonafide winger now for... 
LA, but I like that signing a lot for them. That is some tidy work right there. Not bad at all. And I think, I think that is all the signings. Let's hit that reload one more time. And yes, sir. So I didn't get them all, but I got most of the ones that uh, were big. So they do still have like a few decent names out there floating around in free agency. You got Daniel Sprong is still out there. He had 43 points last year. My thing is, I think he is just struggling to find a team that is willing to <coughs> pay for Daniel Sprong the way that he wants to be paid because Daniel Sprong's been scoring goals in a very efficient way. But teams having to use him in that efficient way more than likely means he's got some defensive liabilities. There's something going on with Daniel Sprong's game that teams aren't completely convinced with and giving him the money that he wants, but he can score. So at some point, someone's going to sign Daniel Sprong, but he's still out there. James Van, Reemda James Van Reemsdyk is still out there. Someone is maybe looking for potentially a power play option, second unit. James Van Reemsdyk can be that great net front presence. Now, I haven't been on top of JVR's game since he le left Toronto, but and I don't know if he's still extremely effective in those areas that he used to be, but I like JVR, so someone sign him. Tyler Johnson is still out there. Justin Schultz, Kevin Shattenkirk, Max Pacioretty, Mike Hoffman, and former latest Stanley Cup champion, former captain of the Buffalo Sabres, Kyle Ocpozo is still out there. Not sure if Kyle Ocpozo is going to retire. That may still be on the table. I don't, like, I, I heard the interview with him on uh, Chicklets, and he sounds like he still wants to go. But, man, like, retire on top, bro. Like, all those horrifying years you spent in New York Islanders and the Buffalo Sabres, like, take this moment and fucking run, bro. Because who? It's, pro it's never going to get better than that. That's my opinion. But what do you guys think? Any of these guys are going to... Well, I think a lot of these guys are going to get signed somewhere at some point. But where do these people end up? And speaking of ending up, where do we think the Edmonton Oilers are going to end up at the end of next year? Will they be good enough to get back to the Stanley Cup Finals? Are they going to collapse after a, a devastating loss? Let's find out. Let's take a look at the Edmonton Oilers on Puckpedia. And let's see how this team is looking. Cap space-wise, they have none of it. They are currently minus $354,000. So, great. And in terms of cap or um, draft pick capital, they don't have any of that really either. In 2025, no first round, no second round, no fifth round. They do have a, a third round and two fourth rounders, a sixth and a seventh. So, yeah. So, all the big picks, all the good picks are gone. They do have a third to play with and an extra fourth. So, I don't know what major things you're going to be able to do with that, but there are some some things more that I think uh, Edmonton can be doing here. So let's take a look at the forwards. Uh, we got this Connor McDavid guy. Yeah, he's pretty all right, I guess. Like, you know, twelve point five million dollars on the cap hit, though. It's pretty high, but ah, this guy's kind of worth the money. You would have to expect. What kind of season are we in for this time around for freaking Connor McDavid? It seems like he's he's trying something new every year. The what? Last season, it was goals. Let's let's hit 60. Did it. Next year, he's like, I'm going to pass like crazy. Let's do 100 assists. Did it. Now what? Now what the fuck is he going to do? He's going to hit 1,000 points this year already at 27 years old. Insane. This guy can hit 2,000 points. All said and done. Like, easily at this point. Currently a 1.74 points per game player. 132 points last season, which was a down year for him, which is fucking insane. So what 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 are we going to get out of Connor McDavid now? Is he going to double down on defense now that they've learned a lot of defensive lessons in the playoffs this year? They really had to buckle down defensively. So are we going to see a lower point total for Connor McDavid this year so he focuses in on his defensive game? Think about um, Stevie Y back in the day, man. Like, back when the Dead Wings were the Dead Things, they fucking Stevie Y was putting up like 150 points, scoring 60 goals, just madness. But they could never win in the playoffs. So Stevie Y, not saying it was his fault, but he started to focus on the team game. And then they started winning Stanley Cups at the sacrifice of statistics. So is Connor McDavid going to do that? Does he need to do that? Is he still just that good of a player that he can be a two almost a two point per game player and responsive uh, responsible enough defensively 
I don't know. But he's only got two more years left on that $12.5 million cap hit, and then he's going to go to, like, who knows, $15, $16 million. But before they even have to deal with that problem, they got the Leon Dreisaitl issue, where he currently only has one more year left at $8.5 million, one of the greatest contracts ever signed in the salary cap era. 28 years old. We know what Leon's all about, baby. Is he... Is he going to stay? Is he going to San Jose? I don't know. What does this dude's cap hit looks like? I'm hearing $14 million. That's where I've I've heard 14. It could potentially be lower. It could potentially be higher. But I wouldn't expect it to be much higher or lower than $14 million. And yeah, man. I mean, Leon Dreisaitl is absolutely worth that money. But if they want to win a Stanley Cup, I mean, like, sacrifices like a little bit of money sacrifice is more than likely gonna have to be made if this team's gonna make it with Leon and Connor on the team I just don't know if that's gonna be an option if if he's gonna want 14 and let's say McDavid's gonna be wanting 15 16 and I know the salary cap is going up but like oh man we're getting it's getting really high like these numbers right but uh, they got a bargain right here in Zach Hyman now, I don't know if Zach Hyman's going to score 50 freaking goals again this season, but I would not be shocked if he did. But he's only on a $5.5 million contract. It's been beyond a bargain for the Oilers since they signed that deal. Yes, I am, I'm very hurt that Zach Hyman's no longer a Leaf, but I think it's safe to say from all of us Leaf fans, we knew and know that Zach Hyman wasn't going to be this player with Toronto. Not that he couldn't be, it's just that's not how they utilized him. And Edmonton is utilizing him so perfectly, so effectively, it's scary. Keep going, Zach Hyman. Now we have Evander Kane. This is interesting. Evander Kane could potentially get moved somewhere. Something could happen with Evander Kane. They might have to move off of this $5.125 million contract. Uh, it's for this year and the next, so not too long. He's still a solid player. He's just been dealing with injuries. He was, you know, basically ineffective in their playoff run from all the injuries and just... I don't know if he's really fitting in with the Oilers right now anymore. Like, it was great at first. That's usually how it goes with Evander Kane. And then as it goes on, it gets less awesome. So I wouldn't be shocked to see Evander Kane moved out of out of uh, Edmonton. Wouldn't be a shock. I think it'd probably be the better move. Uh, we'll see where that one goes. But that's my opinion. He had the Nuge. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, $5.125 million. Excellent contract for the Nuge. No, he didn't have that amazing season that he had um just the 100 point season that he had a couple of years ago but last season yes he did drop off in point wise down to 67 points over the 104 that he had the year prior but by far that was a career year for Ryan Nugent Hopkins but for a 70 point second line center for 5 million bucks you cannot go wrong he's really awesome defensively now he's a great two way center as well Nothing wrong with the Ryan Nugent Hopkins contract right there. You got Connor Brown. Oh, I just lost him. Connor, wait, hold on. There's other names now. Uh, Victor Arvidsson. We talked about him being brought in for $4 million. I think this could be their Evander Kane replacement or w one or the other. Like, Evander Kane can go. They can bring in Victor Arvidsson, slide him into that position. They also have Jeff Skinner now. But for $4 million... A little bit risky because of all the injury problems that Arvidsson has dealt with. But if he can stay healthy, I think he should be good for 20, 25 goals. Maybe more. Adam Henrique, I really liked what he did for the, the Oilers when he was brought in. Should be a fantastic third-line center for them for $3 million bucks. I'm happy with that. Jeff Skinner brought in. So there you go. Another guy that should be able to pot in 20, 25, maybe even more goals for the Oilers. And... It would be nice, uh, you know, safe to say the Oilers are more than likely going to be playoff bound to see Jeff Skinner in his first playoff appearances. And fuck, dude, that just might set him off. Who knows what Jeff playoff Jeff Skinner is going to be like? We have never seen it before. Yanmark, or uh, yeah, Yanmark, Corey Perry, Connor Brown, they're all back. That wasn't the line. I mean, it's Yanmark and Connor Brown. They were fantastic for the Oilers defensively. Uh, down the stretch in the Stanley Cup playoffs, they were awesome, and they're all back. Uh, Derek Ryan is back. He's 37 years old now. And then unrestricted free agents, uh, they haven't brought back Sam Gagne or Adam Ernie. 
I don't they might bring back Sam Gagne. I, I wouldn't be surprised on that one. Adam Ernie, maybe not. Dylan Holloway, they still need to resign. So again, they're gonna need to free up some form of money. And the, the the best option to me is the Evander Kane contract. I think it's still movable, and other teams could use a player like him. Defensively, now I know there's a lot of uh, things with the Oilers' defense. People like to rag on it all the time, starting with Darnell Nurse and his $9.25 million contract. Yes, he is immensely overpaid. Uh, I wouldn't even really say immensely. I think he's like a $6 million defenseman. He should be in and around what uh, Ekholm is making. I don't know where they got the nine. Where I mean, good for you, Darnell. Like we're all, I'm happy for him. Like I'm happy he got paid. I, like his his agent did a fantastic job. I just don't know how Edmonton thought. Like yeah, nine million dollars is right. But anyway, they're paying it. It's too much. It, it's hurting them a little bit. Like their defense isn't very strong. Uh, Ekholm would be their best defensive defenseman who can play defense. Bouchard is a fucking stud offensively dude is gonna put up like 20 goals in and around a point of game player as a defenseman he is in freaking sane and just adds to that disgusting power play that the Oilers have and he's still on a one one more year at 3.9 million dollars massive bargain but this dude's gonna get paid and with Darnell Nurse making 2.2 or 9.25 how can you justify not paying Evan Bouchard at least that if not more so that's going to be an issue, man. Like, yeah, so we'll see how that contract plays out, what Evan Bouchard's future holds. All they all they, they at least they have him as a restricted free agent. So they they have that going for him. Cody CC still here whether you like it or not. Brett Kulak, Josh Brown, and Troy Stetcher are here. They still need to re-sign Philip Broberg, and I think Philip Broberg could have a bigger role with the team this year. He had some good showings in the playoffs, and I'm hoping that he can finally get into the lineup consistently because I think Broberg is a damn fine defenseman. They just need to let him cook a little bit. All right. Goaltending-wise, you got Stuart Skinner there. kind of know what he's all about. He, um, he, will, he will get in ruts. He will get out of ruts. He'll be an amazing goaltender sometimes and not very good at other times. He's not the most consistent, but he's always battling back. He will always try and... When he has a bad game, he will come back with a good one. And then you have Calvin Picard backing him up. Not not the best tandem in the world, but we saw that Stuart Skinner was good enough to get them to the Stanley Cup Finals. So, And in, in a pickle, Calvin Picard, a good enough goaltender to back them up. And I don't think I touched on the, 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 the Jack Campbell buyout. They did, in fact, buy out Jeff... Uh, why am I calling him Jeff Campbell? Jack Campbell. <coughs> Excuse me. So... Yeah, that that sucks. They are going to save a little bit of money on that. I'm just, I feel terrible for Jack Campbell that it happened. You know, us Leaf fans, we kind of saw that coming when he was asking for five. Leafs were like, no way, bro. Like, can't do that. And then Edmonton's like, yes, please. We'll take that. And we're like, ooh, 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 ouch. Okay. And yeah, immediately backfired, which sucks for Jack Campbell. But regardless, Edmonton's going to have his buyout penalty on the books until, well, it goes until... It says here until 27, 28, but I think it it will probably go on longer than that. But um, the first year, it's only a $1.1 million hit, and then 2.3, 2.6, 1.5. So, yeah, they're definitely going to be saving some money there, which is very much so needed. Now, the question is, is this team going to make it back to the finals? I mean, it's, it's a very hard question to answer right now, and just in general, because it is so freaking hard for any team to make it to the Stanley Cup Finals, let alone again in back-to-back years. Yes, Florida did it, and they won the Stanley Cup. Could the same thing happen for the Edmonton Oilers? For me, I'm really hoping so, man. Like, there's a lot of guys on this team I want to win. Zach Hyman being number one. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, man. Like, all the shit that he's dealt with in Edmonton. Like, yeah, I kind of want that dude to win as well. And, well, sadly, Jack Campbell's no longer a part of the organization, but that is what it is. But Connor Brown, bro. Jeff Skinner. Yes, I um I can't guarantee that this team is going to make it back to the Stanley Cup Finals, but I think they have the makeup. They've proven to themselves that they can do it. I feel like they've honestly added um, some good pieces here with Jeff Skinner, man. Like, that's a great add for cheap. They brought in Arvidsson, which I think is another fairly good. A little bit risky, of course. They have to have some risk. That's kind of the game they have to play when you're so tight to the salary cap. You're going to have to take a risk here and there and hope that it pays off. If it doesn't, well, fuck. 
if Victor Arvidsson just ends up being injured for most of the year, like things can go wrong. Like what if McDavid gets injured? What if Dreisaitl gets injured? What if, what if, right? What if the goaltending gets injured? Something could happen. But uh, I feel like Edmonton it should be guaranteed for the playoffs, should be in for a good run in the playoffs, and I am hoping that they can make it to the Stanley Cup Finals again. I think now that McDavid has had that, that sniff, that taste, that touch, whatever it is, he's hungry, very hungry now. And I don't know if he's ever going to be satisfied until he lifts that freaking cup above his head. Whether Leon is there or not, I think McDavid is going to be lifting a Stanley Cup in Edmonton Almost guaranteed. Almost guaranteed. So there you go. I think Edmonton is definitely on their way back to the Stanley Cup. Will he win it, though? Will they win it, though? Let me know. What do you guys think the Edmonton Oilers are going to do this season? All right, let's touch on some other news that's going on in the NHL before we dive into some more uh, team overviews and stuff like that. So Carolina news, you got uh, Evgeny Kuznetsov apparently is leaving for the KHL. Very interesting. I mean... Kind of looked like he was a decent fit there for Carolina. It had some pretty nice uh, goals there, I feel like, in the playoffs for them. But, uh, yeah, he still had a big cap hit. And, I don't know, maybe just a few rough years. Maybe a better opportunity over there in the KHL for him. I mean, he's from Russia, so maybe he just wants to get back over there, be more comfortable. Not really sure, but hoping for the best for Kuznetsov. I'll always remember that first season that he came over, bro. And I picked that dude up in free agency in my fantasy pool and he was unfreaking believable <clears throat> i might have won that season because of you know picking that guy up for free like goddamn so koozie is always going to have a special place in my fantasy heart for uh helping my team out that year and uh, that was fantastic so he's off to uh the khl we'll probably talk about the carolina carolina hurricanes and their makeup and how they could be looking this season but before we get there just got to touch on pittsburgh Kyle Dubas, do you want to be my enemy? Do you want to be my enemy? I ask you again, Kyle. Don't make an enemy of me. He has now stolen Jason Spezza and, I don't know his name yet, but they have stolen apparently a draft expert from Toronto. You knock it off, Kyle. Get your own toys. Get your own Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. Fuck off. Stop taking our Leafs. So great. Leafs lose another person. Probably the best drafter. He's probably the one responsible for all the great draft picks or whatever the fuck doesn't matter doesn't matter they'll get someone else but uh kyle knock it the hell off speaking of knock it the hell off that what is his name alex morello or whatever that guy that was trying to make the arizona coyotes happen and didn't <clears throat> he's gone he's done he is so done not like i feel like last time we talked about him we said he was done now he's done done he is dunyan rings dunyan rings so now he has given up the rights he has given up the rights and all everything for the franchise of the Arizona Arizona Coyotes, the the history, everything. He's taking his billion dollars and he's getting the fuck out of here. Unbelievable. Must be nice. Anyway, so that's over with. Now the question is, what the heck happens with the history of the Arizona Coyotes? Does it just go into the ethers like the Cleveland Barons or like all these other weird teams from the 70s that that did not last very long? Does the Arizona cut like is Bettman going to allow that his baby his history to just end? Bam, it's done. Or is Bettman going to attach it to Utah? He's gonna be like, ah, fuck, dear, take it, take this history, take it. And and they're like, oh, we don't want this Shane Doan history and this this no playoff success history. Like, fuck, I don't know what's gonna happen with uh, that history, but it's history and it's important to the fans. So i just don't have that answer right now it's just uh it's out there but regardless that bad bad man is gone now so now we start the healing process for arizona we let it cool down we find a good new person that can actually get the job done in arizona get a building placed get a team back there and make it work because It'll work. It will work whether like people believe it will or it won't. Just look at the history of Phoenix and Arizona Coyotes. And yes, obviously that wasn't going to work the way that they just did it. So thankfully the saga is ended. We can move on, hopefully. And the next time we have to talk about Arizona is hopefully an expansion draft or something like that. But uh, yeah, the history is out there. So someone take it, I guess. I don't know. Does it go to Winnipeg? Like... What the fuck? I don't even know how any of that works. I'm just I'm just not sure. 
Just not sure. Do you guys know? Let me know if you know. All right, let's move on to another season or team overview, preview, or whatever. We're going to skip San Jose right now because they just... They have a ton of cap space left, and I'm still kind of waiting for them maybe to make a signing, so maybe we'll talk about them next week, but I think we're going to go to Carolina right now, even though they too have a lot of cap space left and more moves incoming. I mean, the Marty Natchez thing, but regardless, I'm going to Carolina. Let's do it. So in terms of that cap space, they have $11.681 million in cap space right now, but they have to sign Seth Jarvis and or Martin Natchez if they want to. I don't think they have enough to get them both done here. So, yeah, that's 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 kind of what's holding up Carolina right now. They're waiting for that Natchez situation to play itself out. Where's he going? What's coming back for him? I don't know yet. But they do have some draft capital in 2025. They have um, all of their picks except for the fifth, and they have a extra extra third round pick. So they got pretty much all their picks are here. Uh, 2026, they don't have a third round pick, but they have an extra sixth. 2027, they're all good. They got everything there. So in terms of their forward wise, pretty familiar group here with Sebastian Ajo. Uh, great player, great contract. Should could be getting more points if he was on a different team, but Carolina plays a more defensive system, and Sebastian Ajo is a phenomenal player. But the argument is with Carolina is like, do they have that superstar player? I feel like Sebastian Ajo is a superstar player, just not in Carolina because of the way that they play. If I think Sebastian Ajo, if he played on a more offensive team, he could get 90, maybe even 100 points, but it is what it do. We have Andrei Svechnikov, one of my favorite players on this team. Probably my favorite player. I love this guy. Still waiting for him to break out for a big goal-scoring season. Last season was pretty rough for him. A lot of injury problems. And it just, yeah, only got into 59 games. Only 19 goals, 33 assists for 52 points. So just a little bit under a point per game. So looking for a bounce-back season for Svechnikov. It did look like he was starting to get his game going. It was a very slow start for him. You got cocked in Yami. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this experiment's really been working out. They took him over from Montreal, gave him a big contract, $4.82 million. And yeah, he's 24 now. Hasn't really taken like a huge step forward just yet. I mean, 50 points. Wait, was it 50 points or no point penalty minutes? 43 points last year was a career year 18 goals that was the most goals so if he can continue to build actually no that was the season prior last season was kind of a disaster a big step back so he went from 50 points back to 36 points 12 goals 15 assists so it's step backwards not ideal now there might be a little bit more offensive time for this for Cockton Yemi maybe some more power play time available to him but yeah I don't know if the experiment is is really working is 4.82 really crippling the team <clears throat> that he's so bad no I don't think so he's still a useful player but yeah it's a little bit expensive and I don't know how tradable that is we talked about Kuznetsov he's gonna leave <clears throat> excuse me he's going off to the a uh, KHL Jordan Martinuk a fan favorite team favorite he's still here for three more years three million Jordan Stahl, the captain, 35 now, three more years at 2.9. He's, uh, you know, starting to slow down offensively, but still really good defensively and faceoff wise. Jack Roslovic brought in, looks like currently he's going to be that second line center right now. Not sure if that's ideal for them. They have Jesper Fast, a solid middle six forward. William Carrier, they brought in, I do believe, I think they brought him in, $2 million for four years. That's a solid middle six forward and then they have Tyson Jost Brendan Lemieux Bradley Nadeau Eric Robertson these are all like minor league um, depth forwards right here and then they have the Jack Drury Seth Jarvis and Martin H has all three currently unsigned restricted free agents so when it comes to Seth Jarvis, what would a contract extension look like for this player? He's 22 years old now. Last season, kind of a breakout. 33 goals, 34 assists, 67 points. Um, for a player that appears to be getting better each year, I mean, you had 40 points, 39 points, and 67 points, respectively. 17 goals, 14 goals, and 33. 
I would say an extension in and around like somewhere between six and eight million dollars. You would be expecting more than likely towards that eight million dollar side. So yeah, that's going to take up a major chunk of that eleven million dollars that they have left. And then Jack Drury. I know they like this player. He's 24 years old, 27 points last year, but I do believe he's like really solid defensively. I've I've heard, but uh, yeah, not huge offensive numbers. Um, but a almost double. He doubled his point totals from the season prior. Played a lot more games, so I would be expecting a bigger role out of Jack Drury. But what does that contract extension look like? It's not going to be too much money. Maybe a couple million, something like that. And then Martin H has like. That's uh, kind of the, like, it feels like he would be great on this team this year. Maybe a little bit more uh, room for him. But with, um, he, he says he doesn't want to be here. So, I mean, he had a pretty good season last year. Not as good as the season prior. But 24 goals, 29 assists, 53 points. Uh, the season before was was the good one. 28 goals, 43, point, 43 assists, 71 points. So, yeah, he fell back about 20 points there. I can understand why... Carolina may not want to give him the money that he wants because, you know, you went backwards, bro, and that's not a good trend. We don't want to see that. So I don't know where or what they're going to get for Martin Natchez, where he's going, what they're targeting. You would have to imagine, like, I'm looking at this team. They need a center. They need a second-line center. Jordan Stahl's a solid one, but he's probably more fit for the third-line center at this point. Jack Rosovic's, like, I know he's like he's he's okay, but he's not like your ideal second line center. I wouldn't think unless they're able to utilize him in a way better way that other teams have. So I I see a second line center hole <clears throat> defensively. You got Dmitry Orlov still here for that seven point seven five million. Um, it's it's an overpayment. Uh, he hasn't been fantastic for Carolina, but he's still pretty good. Jacob Slavin, best defenseman on their team. He got his extension, only like a million dollar raise, which is insane, but still making 5.3 and then goes up to 6.4. Great, awesome, all-around defenseman. Not the most points, but still defensively, unreal. Brett Burns, he's 39 now, one more year at 5 million. I might be his last year. They brought in Sean Walker and signed him, 3.6. That's a good... Um, top four, top six-ish defensemen. Shane Gossespierre, solid signing, could help out the power play. Jalen Chatfield, $3 million. And then they have Tony D'Angelo there as an unrestricted free agent. Not sure if they're going to be bringing him back for his services, especially if they have Shane Gossespierre, kind of a similar offensive-minded defenseman. So don't know if that's really what they're looking for to bring back. And then in net, it's Freddie DeGoat, Freddie Anderson, and Peter Kachekov. 3.4 mil for Freddie, 2 million for Peter. Solid tandem. We know the thing with Freddie. He gets injured a lot. He tends to choke in the playoffs, but regular season wise, as long as he's healthy, he is dynamite. And Peter Kachekov, a younger goaltender, uh, still a little bit inconsistent, but uh, for the most part, pretty damn good. Okay, so now we're looking at this team. I mean, they've lost some pieces, absolutely. Lost some pieces on defense, lost pieces up front. It's uh, still a good, solid-looking team, but forward-wise, I'm not, like, wowed. Like, it doesn't look very deep. Like, you don't have the biggest names, right? You got, like, Martinuk, you got Rosovic, you got Fast and Carrier. Like, they're good players in Carolina, but, like, they're not game-breakers necessarily. Like, I'm I'm not wowed by the offense, but we know it's... Um, it's Brindamore, that defense first, and they do, They still are going to bring in Seth Jarvis. That's a good, solid threat right there. I mean, their top line, if it's like Aho, Savechnikov, and Jarvis, that's that's a great first line. But then, like, after that, it's like, I don't know, man. Uh, defense is still pretty good. Like, it sucks they don't have Pesci anymore. Losing Shea was a, is a big blow, man. They, they have some good defensemen here still. But yeah, that that's definitely going to that's going to hurt them, man. That's definitely going to hurt. They're going to have to ask for more out of their goaltending. Their goaltending's been good, but losing two big pieces on defense, I mean, yeah, I, I can only expect that this team is going to fall backwards, but how much are they going to fall out of a playoff spot? I don't really think so, but I I think now like their their true window that was open for them being contenders and possibly winning a Stanley Cup. I think at this point that is closed. Uh, sorry to say that, 
uh, Carolina fans, it just this team doesn't look like a contender to me. It looks like it could be a good team, should be playoff bound, but I don't know how much work they're going to get done in the playoffs, man. It looks like a, a team that can score even less goals than they could before, which has always been a problem for Carolina. They're just running out of goals. I see less goals being scored by this team and more goals going in. But not so much that I think they're going to miss the playoffs. I, I don't think they're going to be, like, dominating like they have been last couple of years. I think they're going to be, like, maybe 3-4. Could even fall down to a wild card spot. But at this point, I still think that Carolina is a playoff-bound team. But I think that's going to do it for the season overview previews for this week. Let me know if there's a particular team you would like me to cover next in terms of which ones we've already done done i did nashville calgary pittsburgh washington edmonton and we just did carolina so if there's anyone else you would like me to jump to next hit me up otherwise i'll just freaking do random ones as i go throughout the summer and i think that's everything there's only one other piece of news that i want to touch on here this one just came out pretty sad uh sounding but uh st louis blues tory krug defenseman uh potentially could be missing the entire season with an ankle injury uh right now they're talking about some sort of arthritic uh, issue. So he's seeing if they're, they're going to see if he needs surgery. If he does need the surgery, then he's going to miss the entire season, which sucks. And that just kind of brings me to like flashbacks of Ryan Whitney on the spit and chicklets. He had a lot of ankle problems as a defenseman and that kind of ended his career. Now, hope I don't know if this is going to be that situation for Tory Krug, but hoping for the best for him. Like you don't want to see a guy go down that way. So all the best for Tory Krug. Hopefully he's going to be able to recover. And I'll also, I guess since I'm talking about injuries and defensemen, let's just touch on the Yanni Hockenpah situation one more time. Uh, it looks like now it's it's more on the side of he's not going to sign with the Leafs. And I don't believe he's officially signed yet anyway. So that's $1.5 million the Leafs can still play with because it sounds like... Um, with his knee it is in fact like it sounds like it's bone on bone and you can't play on bone on bone when that that's going on there's no cartilage in the knee left then that's kind of all she wrote and it's starting to sound like that's kind of what's going on with Yanni Hockenpah so that fucking sucks too so yes a little bit of some sad news to end on the podcast but that's kind of sometimes that's the way she fucking goes folks but Thank you, everybody, so much for listening. You the best. If you want to be even more of the best, make sure you're hitting that that the star ratings and reviewing the podcast. Maybe let a friend or two know if they think if you think maybe they would like the podcast. That would be fantastic. In terms of what else we got going on with the podcast this week, should be do I will well shouldn't be I will be doing the Shadow of the Erd Tree review for the GamerCast this week. Whether I have beaten the final boss or not, I'm talking about that freaking game so we're gonna be talking some more Elden Ring on this podcast this week we're gonna have a regular wrestling recap I don't think there's any big pay-per-views or anything going on this weekend thank god I'm just kidding I'm just a little wrestled out I want to watch some other stuff this weekend that would be nice and uh yeah so there you go everybody thank you so much for listening uh send in suggestions for a team you would like me to cover your favorite team I'll do it doesn't matter I also upload all of these episodes to the YouTube channel, Gamer GX Videos. You can go over there. The link is in the description. Subscribe. Great place to drop a comment on the YouTube channel if you want a question answered. Shout out on the podcast. I'll answer your question. Anything related to hockey, video games, or wrestling is preferred, but I'll try my best with other questions. And there's an email address, and of course, there is a Twitter page if you want to go over there and follow along. That'd be just dandy. There you go, everybody. I will be back again with some more GX Plus Gazed.